very good afternoon dear listeners this is akashwani kohima at 103 megahertz your station of the region at 103 megahertz 469.5 meter 639 kilohertz listeners from malari shamatar tening and dimapur you are tuning in with me right now at 100.1 megahertz listeners from woka it's 101.8 megahertz listeners from peak you are tuning in with me right now in our program at 102.1 megahertz listeners from zenebuto it's 101.2 megahertz and listeners from mon and twinsang it is also 100.1 1 megahertz my dear listeners welcome once again to our program a drug free nagalin a live interactive bilingual program initiated by the regional news unit akashwani kohima in collaboration with nagalin police department so my dear listeners as always we are going to start with our program this discourse and yes my dear listeners as i've mentioned that this is a live interactive program so if you have any queries if you have any questions any doubts or if you want to you know relate anything to our experts here in our studio then you can write to us at 9436805333 amni kan questions kan no hile bi kumba huda hudi kor bole mun jai kole ajila panelist kan lo hudi bole mun jai koile to apni kan message kor bi 9436805333 no char tin che a chune panch tin 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 de fm space f likhi gina apni kan la question do pata bole pari jabo so my dear listeners every program aji a তে একটা টপিক থাকে তো আজি লাগা ড্রাগ ফ্রি নাগালেন প্রোগ্রাম তে টপিক আছে ড্রাগস অ্যান্ড এইচ আই ভি উইচ ইস সো ইন্টার কানেকটেড ইন্টার রিলেটেড সো ইট ইস গোয়িং টু বি অ্যান ইন্টারেস্টিং অ্যান্ড আ ভেরি ফ্রুটফুল অ্যান্ড ইনফরমেটিভ প্রোগ্রাম সো টুডে ইন আওয়ার স্টুডিও উই হ্যাভ আওয়ার এক্সপার্টস ওয়ান্স এগেন আই উড লাইক টু ওয়েলকাম ডক্টর সিন্টিমেন জামের এনএচ এ কে নোডল অফিসার প্রজেক্ট রেস হ্যালো হাই So we are so happy and we're so privileged to have you here in our studio once again. He will be soon be joined by Dr. Tamsin Manla, Medical Officer, ART Plus Center, NHA Key. So yes, la, without any further delay, as we continue, or should I say, as we commence with our program here, my first question, Adila Topito, as you know, drug and HIV. So my first question is, can you kindly elaborate what is the relation between drug abuse and HIV? Uh, thank you for having me here. Drug abuse and HIV AIDS are interrelated in several significant ways. Some of the key connections uh, would be injecting drug use and needle sharing. It is uh, one of the most direct links between drug abuse and HIV or AIDS. Sharing of needles or other injecting equipment increases the risk of transmission of uh, HIV. And then there are high risk behaviors. Drug abuse can lead to risky behaviors including unprotected sex, having multiple partners, and trading sex for drugs or money. These behaviors increase the likelihood of contracting uh, or transmitting HIV. Drugs also can impair the judgment and lead to poor decision making as well, uh, which in turn can elevate the risk of HIV transmission. Then we have sexual transmission. So HIV is commonly transmitted through sexual contact and individuals who abuse drug may be more likely to engage in unprotected sex or have sexual re- relationships with high risk partners then obviously there is also an impact on our health and uh, treatment as well so individuals with hiv who abuse drugs may have a harder time adhering to hiv treatment and leading to poor health outcomes and maybe even transmission virus again we can also uh, include social and economic factors as well drug abuse is often in, uh, interlinked with social and uh economic issues such as poverty lack of education homelessness and limited access to healthcare these factors can contribute to the spread of hiv and of course there are co-occurring conditions uh drug abuse can exacerbate mental health issues making it more challenging for individuals to maintain a stable lifestyle or seek medical care or stick to treatment plans So there is a direct correlation between drug use and of course uh, yes so considering that particular mm. cause or uh, consideration uh, do you think that in nagaland uh, the number of patients bring or the number of patients struggling with mm. hiv aids are drug abusers yes uh, so there are or most often uh, people who are freshly or 
uh, who has been recently detected of HIV, we can trace them or they have a history of either drug use or alcohol abuse. Obviously, there are isolated cases as well, but then almost many of them, if not most of them, have um, history of drug, drug abuse or alcohol abuse. So, is there any study being done on it in Nagaland in particular? And how long has uh, the medical fraternity been able to uh, link drug use? Uh, the link between drug use and spread spread of HIV has been recognized since the early days uh, of HIV pandemic. We can say pandemic because it's you know, it's all over the globe, globe. Uh, and it began in the late 70s uh, and early 80s. So in the 80s, as public officials began to identify the cases of AIDS, they observed that the virus later, which was identified as HIV, was spreading in specific communities including gay men and people who inject drugs. By mid-80s, injecting drug use uh, was recognized as a significant mode of HIV transmission. Public health researchers also found that sharing of needles among people who inject drugs was a key risk factor for spreading of. This became a critical focus for preven preventive efforts as I, uh, injecting drug users created a direct pathway for transmission of viruses through contaminated blood. Again, beyond uh, needle sharing, drug use has been linked to behaviors that increase the risk of HIV as well, such as engaging in unprotected sex mm -hmm. or engaging in transactional sex, you know, for uh, prostitution to obtain drugs. So the relationship of drug use and HIV has been recognized for over 40 years now with public health efforts uh, in evolving in time to address the issues and mitigate the associated risks as well. The identification of injecting drug use as a transmission route for HIV led to harm reduction programs which are being run currently and preventive strategies that continue to play a key role in reducing the spread of HIV among the people who use drugs. So is there a specific drug or what is the commonly used drug or substance that may lead to HIV risk? There are some, there are certain drugs and substances which are more closely associated with behaviors that increase the risk of HIV transmission. This risk may stem from sharing of needles or syringes, engaging in risky sexual behaviors while under the influence. Some commonly drugs uh, that I can think of uh, are injecting drugs. So they can be either heroin or opiates. You know, in our state, uh, most commonly used is sunflower. And then there are also drugs that are known as methamphetamines, which are also injected this when they engage in injecting drug, drug practices they tend to share needles or syringes increases the risk of hiv transmission then there are stimulant drugs uh, which is particularly linked to risky sexual behaviors uh, those are we can uh, those are methamphetamine groups they are uh, they have been linked to high risk sexual behaviors and having multiple partners as well then cocaine can also be injected but then even if cocaine has been snorted, it can lead to disinhibition of behaviors and high risk sexual activities as well. And then these days, uh, party drugs mm -hmm. are very common. Ecstasy, for example, ketamine. So they are often used in parties and these drugs also again lowers inhibition and judgment. And then alcohol is also one such drug. It is linked to reduce inhibition and increased likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors including sexual behaviors. And then it can also, it not it can, but then it impairs the judgment for the users. Mm. So, and result in unprotected sex mm. or other unsafe practices. Then marijuana, it's actually not as strongly related to the other drugs that we have talked just now. But then, yes, it is also linked to um, high risk behaviors and because it decreases inhibition and impaired judgment. So it is important to know that these drugs and substances, while having different mechanisms of action, can all contribute to conditions uh, or behaviors that increase the risk of HIV transmission. So to the prior understanding that only injectables yes, yes. Uh, can cause HIV, mm. but it's not just that, but any form of drug any because form it affects the whole mental mental well-being yes behavior. yes mental and behavior as a doctor you have mentioned earlier that mm, a lot of causes mm. that can uh, a lot of factors mm. to be correct mm. uh, 
contribute to mm. drug use mm. and HIV, yes. but particularly in the context of Nagaland, mm. how does drug lead to spread of HIV in our own Naga community? So drug use can lead to spread of HIV in any community. Mm. That we have to appreciate that. Uh, but there's many interconnected mechanisms and we have to understand it as per the context of our state or context of that particular region. We have faced multiple challenges related to drug abuse and HIV AIDS. Some of the key factors uh, that I can think of are injecting drug practices and needle sharing. We have discussed that earlier. Then we have also risky sexual behaviors. And this is very common in either com community. One thing that we want to note is that uh, some of them engage in multiple sexual partners and for transactional sex in exchange for drugs and for money and due to that is due to again our state's socio-economic condition mm. and then again uh, there are a lot of stigmas associated mm. due to our beliefs uh, and then obviously we have limited access to health care mm. also and that those we can attribute mm. it to our low e socio-economic status as well these issues can delay early diagnosis of treatment mm. and also increase the chances of spreading of the virus, especially when there is a presence of social stigma and discrimination. Mm. It depose a significant barrier for effective mm. HIV prevention and care. And like I was saying earlier, because of our socioeconomic instability, mm. there, like in, in our state, these issues can be compounded by the limited uh, job opportunities leading to some in individuals turning to drugs or engaging in high-risk activities for survival. Mm. And obviously there's also a lack of awareness. Herein we can uh, appreciate that we have public health co campaigns or programs that are being run to create awareness, but then ag again we have to see whether the society accepts such information mm. or whether we are being allowed to, it yes, or whether we are allowed to provide accurate information as well and that also really depends on our the society in general our mindset then it has a uh, families and our communities also has they have a uh, profound effect in our understanding uh, in our perception so yes uh, as per your question it's not just Nagaland per se but then it's quite common there is an impact from the community uh, we, in uh, provide for the departments to create awareness so some community may not accept such mm. open accurate discussion. or discussions mm. so yes in our state that is present mm. and similar issues I'm sure it's prevalent in other states as well but in their own way yeah. so uh, what role does education and awareness play in preventing both drug addiction and the spread of HIV AIDS particularly among the youths in Nagaland. As you rightly pointed out that there is a need, urgent need of awareness in our society. And I, uh, there is less transparency mm. when we discuss about unprotected sex mm. or for that matter, drug mm. abuse. So mm. I think we need a lot of awareness. Yes. So what does education mm. uh, and awareness play in preventing? So first of all, uh, this thing, the, the one that we are talking right mm. now, education, it's just a simple word, one word, education, mm. Mm. awareness, right? But then when we are trying to disseminate, when, when we are trying to spread this, then goes from individual level to a group of people, a small community, then to the whole neighborhood. Then So there are multiple levels of uh, to do that. And then, first of all, I would like to point out in an individual level. Mm. So... Here we need to learn about this. We need people to be aware of the substance use and the and their disorders and the link between substance use and HIV as well. They need to understand it. They need to uh, understand the facts they, and we need to debunk the myths as well. And then obviously education will reduce the fear and judgment you know, which are the root cause of stigma. And then during such uh, education and awareness we have to make given effort not to use judgmental language. That's also very important. And then the see in our in our centers we don't use the word P 
patient. Rather, we call them as participants or clients. That's uh, when we say sometimes when we use the word particular word as patient, then you know uh, some people may marginalize them as well. Obviously, there is a challenge when it comes to addressing stigma. So again, we have to gently correct them to provide accurate information, and to the to do that, we have to encourage open discussions, and we have to you know challenge the stereotypes that are that have been created by the society as well. In a societal level, we have to obviously we have public awareness campaigns, and this campaigns can dispel the myths as well in in a uh, broader way and highlight the stories of hope and recovery mm. uh, then w obviously we have policy reforms mm. so this advocates for policies that protect the rights of drug users and people living with HIV and AIDS this will include include uh, harm reduction approaches access to health care and, and implementation of anti-discrimination laws there are, we also have harm reduction programs so these support uh, programs such as needle exchange programs uh, then opiate substitution therapies and obviously in some states uh, and in some districts we have this supervised injection sites where uh, people who say they want to continue injecting drugs maybe we give them a safe site safe practice so these programs not only reduce the risk but also challenge the negative perception of drug users as well. Then obviously we need to talk about healthcare access and s sensitivity. Yeah. So we need to ensure that healthcare services are accessible and are sensitive to the needs of HIV users and people with HIV and AIDS. So that's why we have these ART plus centers. That's why we have OST centers. These are, and through us, we connect them to different, again, departments as per their need. We identify them and then we advocate for such healthcare prudency. Then there are communi com uh, community engagements as well. So we're in try to create a supportive community so that we can reduce isolation and we can foster a sense of well-being among users or among the people who have HIV. Then we also have media representations as well. So it encourages uh, media to portray the drug users and people with HIV in a balanced and compassionate, compassionate uh, manner. Positive representation has significantly influenced our public perception as well. Then obviously there are legal protections for these uh, high risk groups or we can say uh, vulnerable groups. So the advocate for strong legal protection against discrimination, especially in employment, housing and then public services as well. So it creates and it has created a more equitable environment for those facing stigmas as well. Then there are various support groups and peer networks that, that are being run in the background. There's, there are a lot of services, but then and awareness programs are being conducted, but it's just that uh, it's too many to name. And mm -hmm. again, very much easier said than yeah, done or yeah, as well. I think we need a lot of, uh, as you've mentioned, rightly mentioned, different levels of mm. awareness mm. so that the department, consent department can facilitate yes. the services mm. to people struggling with HIV AIDS or for that matter even drug abuse. So with that we will take a short break yes. and we will be right back. Sometimes be 
should know Just say no, no Just say no, no Every day The choice is yours I choose life It's a happy choice Say yes with me I'm here for you Say yes to life And no to drugs It's the only way There's no other way There's no Welcome back, dear listeners. This is Akash Vani Kuhima at 103 MHz. Welcome to our program, A Drug-Free Nagalin. Today's discussion is on the topic, drugs and HIV. In our studio, we have Dr. Sungtiman Jamir, NHAK Nodal Officer Project RES, and he is joined with Dr. Timsimunla, Medical Officer, ART Plus Center, NHAK. Thank you so much, ma'am, for joining us. Uh, in spite of your busy schedule, but the doctors are here to discuss gravity that our society, uh, Naga society, uh, struggles with drug use and HIV. So, madam, in our state, the first case of HIV was detected from injecting drugs. Yes. yes. So, how grave is that issue in our present scenario? Initially, like you have said, like HIV was first de- detected among the IBTU group, and. Uh, Slowly by slowly, all sal jada kan jada tido as we proceed, proceeded, the group from the IVTU it shifted to uh, sex, mm. true sex focus. Mm. So the main route of transmission was true sexual route. So during that time, it will time there mm. drug use pra HIV like yato continue na namishe through various interventions program kikiki interventions like yampra na namishe na spread to through sexual route to pra dominate which is na but then again back it has not the past two to three years uh, the scenario na gane na session rito and drug primarily again that through drug use HIV spread to other contribute brother back I had na picture to take us Mm. So that is the scenario. Is the scenario. Uh, sexual route we need to Maybe mm. that mm. be through drug. It to sub continue na jayet kado na. Arbi back ayja. It to the track to the case. Is there anything that our doctor would like to add? Yes. Uh, so I would like to supplement, Madam, here. Actually, because of see, at the end of the day, we are trying to control the spread of HIV, mm. be it among sex workers or be it among. Uh, ID use, drug users. So here, they will have again other health related issues, not just HIV. And then HIV people are at risk and vulnerable for multiple number of infections and other comorbidities as well. So we can talk about hepatitis as well here, TP, pneumonia. And for this, they need proper health care and infrastructure. So for this, for proper health care or for proper uh, for a comprehensive treatment for them. So we, again, we can talk about the roads as well, right? In our hilly region, for them to ever access, they need good access, accessibility as well. So this is with the increase, increase in number of people living with HIV, the, there is an increase in burden on the government as well to provide from 
financial to manpower to infrastructure to logistics everything has to be done by the government so yes uh, this is a concern not only in terms of uh, health care but then also when it comes to the larger picture where all there's a lot of stakeholders then so yes this is a burden for us a grave issue that our society is struggling. Mm. So how can injecting drug users reduce their risk of contracting HIV? Drug users to reduce their risk of contracting HIV Sp specifically it means uh, there are certain programs that uh, is going on right now so for example like uh, safe needle syringe exchange program uh, through this and um, this is particularly we focus uh, drug users come can focus on it because injecting drug users is one main route which mm. like it so which is how to share great heart and that is how HIV to like it which is how to share and grab and they will not care about the toward risk behavior so it to educate Korea needle syringe exchange program it's one main program so it do one use single use action drug users but I Jolabula is a bit little single use drug, uh, means syringe drug. Now I share it with you. It's a program. It's actually an introduction to Hina. It works with the more help class studies have shown. It has decreased. It has decreased among the uh, drug user population. It will have group cut it, spread transmission, reduce gravity. The more problems are which they educating them about um, safe, um, uh, sex uh, practices nah? we don't have use of condoms or to avoid uh, multiple sexual partners and all that which is very important because it goes hand in hand drug use alcohol abuse and the disease itself hepatitis b the hepatitis or hiv nah? we do want so Connection as a kid or little it will indulge just lava sexual behavior disturbance uh, means that it so risky behaviors so uh, educating them about uh, the dangers of risky behaviors and how to uh, avoid such behaviors program and another is a uh, true OST program mm -hmm. or substitution therapy drug mm -hmm. to help them come out from this it will major problem but also somehow automatically relation to JJ be my lot it will not be free of all Thank you at the same time, educate them, sensitize them about the safety measures, safe sex practices, or which their behavior change strategies come much of the data behavior. So these are some of the certain programs or some strategies or activities measures that uh, focus correct among the drug users and this this are some of the strategies that uh, will help in reducing. Uh, my question on that is, mm. I think drug users mm. uh, are that target group which is mm. difficult to penetrate mm. or yes. to give any kind of awareness mm. and sense that. So how is the department trying to educate them or programs can you give them if you can kind of highlight? Uh, I think it's from Cindy's side. Yes. So we have this uh, a network of peer educators. So these are drug users and they have a lot of friends mm. uh, who practice in such activities so we educate them then they spread the message so some in during peer education we also teach them how to safely inject drugs because at the end of the day we cannot you know just go and say that you cannot inject drugs i mean we cannot uh, so at least we let them know then we tell them we get them uh, help them participate in programs such as safe needle syringe exchange programs and then they also distribute uh, needles and condoms and uh, this thing syringe and one good thing that they do is they bring back the used needles mm. and then we dispose them off properly mm. then there are outreach workers they in turn again uh, they have a wider audience as well and then they can also participate in giving out awareness programs as well in every centers we have counselors the counselors more than the mitigation actually sometimes mm. counseling is uh, this thing it really helps them adhere to their medication mm -hmm. so they at the beginning they educate them regarding anything and everything regarding hiv mm -hmm. and uh, injecting drug use as well and then we de follow them up regularly so that they are adhering to the program that is best suited for them so if you're looking from an eagle's eye uh, from then there are a lot of programs that are being implemented that are being run but then it's just that many of us 
are not aware of such programs that are being run. And then and we can talk about NGOs because they also do a lot of groundwork and then they bring in a lot of patients and then there's a lot of referrals also. The, some departments will refer the particular clients to say uh, ART plus centers because they suspect them of having HIV. So again, uh, all this are being done, reduce. The, at the end of the day, the aim is to reduce the spread of HIV. Uh, so you have uh, workers working, or yes. should I say, yes. service providers at different levels. At different yes. levels. Yes. So what are the various medications available for treatment of drug users or for people living with HIV? Uh, for particular, for drug users, I think Dr. Sung will elaborate on that. Mm. But my part on HIV, no? so HIV particularly, there is a treatment, of course, treatment as a treatment as a RBG day. Though we know that HIV is not, the treatment is not specifically for cure, we know mm. that there is no cure for it, but we, uh, the treatment is something like um, treating a uh, diabetic patient. Mm. It comes under a chronic managed blood disease. Uh, in, uh, initially, the starting to HIV first, well, they notice mm. it's like a death sentence. Mm. HIV like usually do death sentence, mm. but with the introduction of the mm. ARD antiretroviral therapy, mm. ARD treatment with the discovery of this, it's almost like it's, it comes under a chronic manageable mm. disease HIV. That means with medication, a person can live a healthier, much uh, better, good quality of life. Uh, it was uh, so HIV drug do there are a series of classes of drug groups of drugs um, that's there in ERT treatment. So basically ERT Gawaido, it's a combination of uh, three different drugs combined. Okay, so we call it highly active antiretroviral therapy. At a single drug in Hidelibi, three a combination of three drugs from at least two class, two different groups of drugs. It is ERT like a family group, mm -hmm. na, two different groups of drugs combined. Mm -hmm. So that means two drugs from one family, one class of drugs, and one drug from another class in an Ishtawana combined. It is a combination study subject that combined kuna, it is a drug by a compulsive control. So, and when you talk about how it works, HIV, Dawai, but Paldo, no Kurede, to it to Kinar, no Motor Kure, Nakushu, you know, and in simple way, bra, HIV, Dawai, bra, do virus to virus to at different level stages, like a Dela reproduction, la, Dibra, hamper Kurede, Neres, in the different stages of the life cycle of HIV, to Kite, to Dibra, hamper Kurede, to disturb Kurede, Dibra, to block Kurede. In other words, na to kita the block kritibo, uh, the virus, HIV virus to replicate kuli na pare the lot target the lot to HIV virus to come to kitabo na to kita gawde u to person na HIV person na gawde HIV la lot to kita reduce mo virus will not be in a position to cause problems na to HIV related problems kado na AIDS problem AIDS problem mang kuli na to itu lai de to and automatically it will give the chance for the immune system of the patient to re re mm. reproduce, mm. to re rebuild itself. Like you know, the defense system to the virus to kill under control with the virus. Now, suppression to break the virus, the defense system to damage no the virus. To kill the virus by damage no the the defense system to again rebuild the virus. To the, the, again stabilize the patient to better, healthy life, longer duration, Na life span kuli kan bawa lah tadi beli beli. Hal pra manusia healthy je, manusia health hal lagi intensif lah, tapi hal betul. So it's a lifetime treatment. Or which day the way bra, in a lot of stuff bra. Itu bimaru tak kiri ni. HIV problem tu mulai nanti. Arum bra normal man healthy life tak kita jumpa lagi. Betul kan? So that is how air di the way bra. Doctor, uh, we have seen in news also that people with HIV, they have led a productive life for over two decades. Uh, is that the case here in Nagali? So far, it uh, has start in the ART treatment, start in the 19 years, 18-19 years. So, we're still yet to see patient at first, initiate growth, it's a power. So, 
up to a few years man kina kay next next to it to success rate success rate to so far to bali bali chat dikhase that's why it to be encouraged for and not only that go to patient life hiv it's free life it love me to the risk of transmission are irritating patient on the suppression reduce quality that is the target of your treatment transmission so transmission to kita arrest the population it to make to control mm-hmm. the so mm-hmm. that is the target so air to good air to treatment is equal to anti uh, virus at an anti detectable level na in our should do good quality of life so that is the target and no transmission which is equal to no transmission so that is the target so anti retro viral therapy do who can apply aro kitai kan to send to stay in akina like room any positive detectors na any person H blood test kuna HIV to reach detect kuche bilo ART center they can come and ever there is no bar age irrespective of age really any kuna any person pacha damor pura na pacha ani bi adults kan kan bi ART treatment as they can come and ever at the ART center the nearest ART center they na Uh, in our previous episodes can they even earlier we have discussed the importance of counseling yes uh, how important it is especially recovery process day eh? so uh, when it comes to people with drug abuse and live the people living with HIV uh, counseling is important na kinda it's extremely important it is very very important counseling plays a major role whether it be HIV treatment alone or along with drug abuse na our especially drug abuse to mix crucial to our challenge ta ho ja ke lo ni do addiction ekta lot cop kru bola se tai bimar tha ke lot addiction ekta se do na we to drug alcohol addiction related to shibole do change bishi da ho ja to counseling ta bishi focus ko bola because art treatment is such that art da bhai do adder special important hoy dawai to take talanium de follow group le important ho jaye ekta ache the person na to tai with the treatment regimen protocol to take pata follow group le na parile to the chances of full dawai ba moto ko le na parile to our virus will come back to tai back bimar khan problem ho jaye to ba hiv la most important treatment de ekta adherence to the treatment is very very important now it to adherence the district ko to it ekta factor ho jaye to and drug abuse ka ho alcohol na activity and dependence you know which the drug act the abuse usually do tala adherence cha na ko the effect only be high as eh na it's more than 90% we know that the tala risk to tai dawai do thik pa na ko be high na you know the tai it to cover the mun jadan ti do natural about nutrition diet be important ni the the dawai ka ti do na hi jai na so high chances of treatment failure means dawai tik na ka bo dawai tik ka na ti do ultimately hmm. it will mean that oh, the consequences of hiv problem they land up with hmm. so mahala target to hmm. hiv that they give at the normal as any other person quality good quality life na thaki bole la target as you know it to na pare cha na thai tik pa ka na usually to drug addiction which actually that's why we work hand in hand with ost department by just drug abuse background usually to counselor ba policy counseling ya which the rb ost la section tv pata ho so that patient by willing to to help the patient to from drug addiction that addiction it to that would be the best solution mina mm. uh, nila whether alcohol dependence will be to come out from alcohol would be the best solution for the patient to have a uh good type and a good outcome treatment or quality life like we do to come out from that addiction would be the best solution to do try we we'll try our best possible na ala ala programs ka do what ever we have just talk mm. in the previous just few minutes mm. back na mm. do we refer to OSC section mm. and they will take care of that drug addiction part with mm-hmm. their counseling they have mm-hmm. their own way they have mm-hmm. their own tactic right? mm-hmm. and our counselor will deal with the design that is how we go side by side so i believe that uh, health workers like you m- may face a lot of challenges yes. so can you kindly highlight the challenges while providing hiv aids services to area especially where there uh, is a l- alarming rate of drug users yeah challenges to be share say you pick the main country down you reach out police down jai harai loi they disappear they will never be 
mm-hmm. around at one place na tahan kit and they are like like oh they live a life of that who post that mm-hmm. 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 and ito bisual ay nako and usually background be say mm-hmm. you know family baby sa to cuz means now they're so fed up with it ita to go hamper be ita to tangi ka mo kuno means in the outcast dish na in high tabi taki na background bisual ay na because they are ready ดิคันวิเชโดโซตาลาตังกิเทรสคูเลกตาบิชิติตาตังกิอิตุเอ่อคาวนเซลิงทูบิลิตเบไรตาลาเมนทัลสเตตัสติกิเลกเวลิเล
you take seriously, mm. but at the right time, at the right age. Don't you tell a woman to youth can do it's a time to focus on your career, mm. on your studies and all. You can enjoy life but always uh, try to avoid uh, risky behaviors. Mm. And that is what I encourage them. Thank you so yeah. much, uh, Doctor. Yes, uh, life is full of choices mm -hmm. and then we all have our own potential. Mm -hmm. And it is very normal for us to be pressured mm. by our friends, family and the society. Mm. But I think uh, always, let's say, diligently, you know, mm. choose the right choices. Mm. Make the right choices. Make the right choices. We need to value our health. And like Madam has said here, we need to get ourselves tested uh, regularly. Uh, we need to know our status. Mm. Then we also need to keep ourselves informed and updated as well. Then if you have a problem in any aspects of life, mm. It's okay. You can always seek support. Mm -hmm. There are different programs for different problems, and, and you don't have to, you know, just burden yourself with uh, problems and then get yourself into other uh, more sinister, more uh, bigger problems. Though, so I think we need for anything we need to actually you know, seek help. Help is just in, around if the corner if you. Uh, search for it. for it yeah and then obviously we all need to take responsibilities for ourselves for our families and for our society you no know? and then yeah let's all dream big uh. thank you so much doctor so thank yes you. my dear listeners our, our doctors want us is to be responsible to be informative and to be informed and take that the right to action and be responsible. With that, we come to the end of our program. This is a drug-free Nagaland with Dr. Tim Simenla, medical officer, ART Plus Center, NHAK. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. Dr. Sintiman Jamir, NHAK nodal officer, Project Rest. With that, we come to the end of our program.